What's up, my people? It's your guy, Dynamics, and I'm here with another one of Boss Reactions. All right, guys, so I got some good ones today. As usual, you know, I'm going to give you the spill recently, so here we go. Uh, all right, so um, I got some on uh, Ocean Water Mysteries, and I have also some uh, unexplained uh, instances in, like, woods or whatever like that, or forests. So we're going to check those videos out and see how they go. Um, definitely, um, like, subscribe to the channel, go over to our YouTube channel, Boss Reactions. Uh, like I said, and as always, you join the gaming channel, Boss Gaming Network, all that stuff is in the link in the description and everything. Yeah, and, uh, alright, so let's go ahead and get started with this. We're gonna start out with the Supreme, Supreme YouTuber. Do that videos, and then, uh, we'll go from there. Every journey into the woods has the promise of the unexpected, especially because there are so many forests all kinds in so many places all over the world and with limited access to so many of them you never know what kind of fantastical finds are waiting for you fantastic and frightening too <laughs> From haunted cemeteries in the middle of ghost towns to hermits hiding out for almost 30 years the world's largest mushroom to mind-bending mirror sculptures say hello to strange here are 15 of the most mysterious forest discoveries in the world. Today in uh, Bethlehem looking at this old abandoned train station. <laughs> Number 15. Okay, we're going with the Supreme, so let's do number 15. Let's get into it. I think Supreme is pretty good. I like him. He's a good YouTuber, I think. I love reacting to his videos. Check out his YouTube channel. Secret Masonic Cave. Who doesn't love an adventure in a secretive cave? Safety first, naturally, but very few are as mysterious as this one. This Oregon cave is 17 miles east of Crane Hot Springs and 52 miles east of Burns. It's owned by the Masonic Lodge of Burns and is called the Maller Cave, wow. a classic example of a large lava tube cave. The cave is 3,000 feet long and the height varies from 8 feet near the entrance to a maximum of 20 feet far back into the cave. Wow. An underground lake fills the lower end of the cave, and fluctuation can cause the water to rise within 1,000 feet of the entrance. Cool, right? That's pretty incredible. I mean, but if you think about it, though, like, that sounds like the start of, like, some sort of monster, like, horror movie or something like that. Like, something like that lives in that cave, and, like, some hikers are, like, trying to escape from it. Like, I don't know. Like, That'd be creepy to go at nighttime, I will say that. In 1938, two members of the lodge came up with the idea of holding a meeting of masons in the cave. Their idea was well received, and the first official outdoor stated meeting of masons in the western United States was held here. The event has become a landmark function for the masons in this area, and this year was the 83rd year that this special, one-of-a-kind event was held. Many thousands of master masons attend this outstanding event. It's gone from a single evening with supper around the mouth of the cave to a weekend camp out with tents to travel trailers of all sizes. Now, let's get ready for today's open discussion. Some say he has no face. Others, that his face looks different to everyone who sees it. But everyone generally agrees that Slender Man is perhaps the internet's best and scariest legend. Okay, so everyone's been talking about Slender Man for a very long time. Um, okay, so I, what what I will say is that the first time I heard about Slender Man, I think it was honestly, I think it was playing a video game. I think I was playing Minecraft, and like some of the uh, clan members I was playing with, like they mentioned something about Slender Man being in in Minecraft, and we were supposed to run whenever we saw him. You know, and sure enough, Slender Man did make an appearance in Minecraft eventually. And, you know, it was a while back. But, I mean, like, you know, taking it to the point where I think this might be real, um, I don't know. But then again, people do report seeing it in the woods. And you know what I say about things that's in the woods, especially at nighttime. I mean, it's creepy. That's all I got to say. So it's possible something's out there. I don't know. It's supposed to be an invented character who can be traced back to a meme in 2009. 
However, two Wisconsin preteens shocked the country in 2014 after attempting to murder their classmate, a sacrifice to a fictional phantom known online as Slenderman. Their victim survived, and her harrowing story sparked international interest in the legend. Have a look at this image for yourself. Is it possible that this monster could be based on some sort of reality? Is this the horrifying Slender Man? I mean, well, I, honestly, I think it's a guy like literally wearing suit, wearing a suit and stilts, and <laughs> literally just putting a mask over his face. Um, but uh, like I said, I don't, I don't believe that this is true. A lot of, a lot of young people believe it's real. I mean, especially back like you know, in the day like when it first came out, it was like young people talked about it more than anything else, but. You know, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I don't, I don't believe this is a real monster or a ghost or whatever whatever they want to call it. You know? Comment below using the hashtag open discussion. Let us know all about it. You want to know a little secret? If you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you'll have superpowers for the rest of your life. So what are you waiting for? Time to fly. Number 14, Ghost Town Graveyard. With its history dating back all the way to the 17th century, the forgotten town of Doodletown, New York, is one of the most underrated pieces of history that you can still hike to today. Aside from some foundations and cellar holes... Wait, did he say it was called Doodletown? <laughs> Hold on, I gotta go back. Let me... I just wanna make sure I heard that correctly. It's not like he said Doodletown. Let's take it there. I, I, I just want to go back and hear this. Hold on. Century, the forgotten town of Doodle Town, New York, is one of the most under. Okay, he didn't say Doodle Town. He said Doodle, like D O O D L E, Doodle. Okay, I thought he said Doodle Town. I was about to be like, what? <laughs> All right. All right, New York. Underrated <laughs> pieces of history that you can still hike to today. Aside from some foundations and cellar holes, the Second June Cemetery is one of the only things that the state didn't demolish as soon as the last person left. Visitors interested in exploring it today can check out the area now that it's part of Bear Mountain State Park. By the 1950s, most of the residents had moved away, many to nearby Stony Point or into southern Orange County. Most of the remaining structures were demolished or disassembled and moved out by the late 1960s. Debris was buried, the roads were closed, and the surrounding woods were allowed to grow over the properties. The last remaining building, the Stone Schoolhouse, was kept as a shelter for hikers until vandalism caused the park commission to tear it down in 1980. Bear Mountain began to be developed as a park in the early 20th century, and now Doodletown and nearby Iona Island were designated as a conversion area in 1997, so the birds in the ghost town graveyard keep people coming back. Number 13. Cool. <laughs> Century Old Train Station. This train station opened in the 1880s and was abandoned in 1925 because of the. That's a serious old train station. That thing's like literally in the middle of the woods. Like, really? Popularity of automobiles. Makes sense, right? The Maplewood train station brought hundreds of visitors from Boston, New York City, and surrounding areas to enjoy all that Bethlehem, New Hampshire had to offer. But by the 1920s, the Maplewood train station became vacant and has remained that way ever since, almost a hundred years. Yet, it's still standing. The building is crooked because it's sinking in the ground on one side, and the floor is all messed up inside because it's not sinking. Of course, it used to have a boarding area twice as long as the building and a steeple on the top where you can look out for a train by climbing a ladder. The platform and boarding area were removed a long time ago with the steeple. There was also a long row of tall pine trees on the opposite side of the track, Today, the good news is that for the first time in nearly a century, there's activity at the Maplewood train station as a volunteer group begins documenting the structure before reassembling it and opening it to the public. It would be open to everyone, available for historic displays and community programs, and serve as an example of Bethlehem's tourism history. You know, that's actually pretty cool, you know, <clears throat> to, to see that it lasted that long, like over 100 years, and like now there's people that want to rebuild it because of its, uh, of its historic value you know and you know and he had a clear description of what it used to look like so they probably could rebuild it almost identical to what it used to be 100 years ago and it probably was beautiful like 100 years ago yeah that's pretty cool number 12 matrix forest on this tree farm of 25,000 acres there are thousands of hybrid poplar trees 
It's called the Boardman Tree Farm, and it's located in Morrow, Oregon. It can be easily viewed from I-84. It's five miles west of the I-82 junction, and it seems to give everyone Matrix vibes. The type of trees that grow at the Boardman Tree Farm are called Pacific Albus, a trademark name that loosely means Pacific Whitewood. It's a hybrid of four to five different poplars, cross-strained for better yield, faster growth, less use of irrigation water, straighter growth, and things like that. They are almost all the same size. When it comes to watering the trees, the irrigation process is controlled by a computer, and each tree gets the same precise amount of water. The trees take 10 to 12 years to reach maturity, after which they're felled and sent to the mill, where they're shaped into boards and wood chips. The wood chips are used for paper manufacturing, while older, taller trees are harvested for lumber products. The sawmill is located roughly in the center of the tree farm and processes the produce of 2,000 acres of land each year. The processed lumber is then sold all over the world with China, Indonesia, and Malaysia, along with Mexico, the biggest offshore buyers. Number 11. That's pretty cool. You know, I never knew that. To think that they sell over 2,000 acres of trees, like, normally, and they ship to the world. Like, it's possible that you or me have even, like, written on some of this, like, bark and don't even realize it. You know, like, they said uh, major countries, like Indonesia, China, Mexico are some of the biggest buyers of the of the, of the wood. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool information. Yeah. Plane wreck. In January of 1943, the B-23 Dragon Bomber went down at Loon Lake in Idaho with eight men aboard. The plane was returning to Tacoma, Washington from a training mission in Nevada when it flew into a heavy snowstorm. Unable to maintain altitude, the pilot decided to attempt a landing in Boise. The approach was hampered by heavy icing and failed radio, but a hole developed in the cloud cover. The frozen lake was spotted and a landing was attempted. The first approach had to be abandoned. In a successful second approach, the plane touched down on the frozen lake, sliding across the ice and through the trees. With both wings sheared off, the plane came to a rest 150 feet from the shore. Incredibly, all eight men survived. A broken kneecap was the only injury. The crew suffered from the cold and lack of food. They collected pine boughs to sleep on and gathered firewood in brutal blizzard conditions. Five days out, they came across a remote cabin with cots and some food. They found a map that indicated a ranger station was nearby. From there, they telephoned for help. The men had hiked for 14 days through waist-deep snow with little food and next to no supplies. And after 21 days in the brutal winter conditions, all eight crewmen made it to safety. Number wow, like talk about a survival story. They had to have been like one of the luckiest crew ever. They survived a plane crash where the plane lost both his wings, landed in the woods. They ended up finding a ranger station and ended up calling for help 14 days later. Man, these guys had to be like prior military like or something like survival skills is on point. <laughs> like seriously, like what the... Number 10. Spooky Epping Forest. The 6,000 acres of this incredible forest is the largest public open space in the London area. It's true, it's home to 55,000 ancient trees more than any other single site in the country, representing some of the oldest living plants in Europe, irreplaceable and rare. But although much of its more mysterious folklore has been lost over the years, creepy stories have survived, which contrasts sharply with the mysterious beauty of this historic forest. Some of these tales reveal a darker side to this historical place, but its reputation as one of the most haunted forests is in England. There are numerous other sightings and experiences that have occurred at Epping throughout the years, Poltergeist activity is also regularly experienced with people reporting being pushed or touched by unseen hands. The ghost of an ancient queen wow. is said to haunt the forest. Apparitions have been known to show up out of nowhere. A troubled spirit is said to run out in front of vehicles on the roads, staring into the driver's eyes before disappearing. If you leave your car in neutral on the hill, your vehicle will appear to roll upwards towards the trees, where it's said that all these ghosts still linger. Crazy, right? The ghost of a young girl who reportedly drowned has been seen, as well as a headless horseman. There are rumored satanic rites and human sacrifices. Could it get any worse? Turns out, yes. Number nine. Wait, wait, wait. What? Oh, no, that place sounds dangerous. I don't even know why they have that open to the public. They need to close that off. I don't know, like, they need to go ahead and, like, 
bringing the church or something. That, that's crazy. Human sacrifices, ghosts pushing your car, like headless horsemen. That's not like something out of a freaking fantasy book or something. The Haunted Pine Barrens. On the east coast of the United States, they say that a legendary entity inhabits this place, the Pine Barrens of South Jersey. It's called the Jersey Devil. They say it's a kangaroo-like creature with a horse or goat-like head, leathery bat-like wings, horns, small arms with clawed hands, legs with cloven hooves, and a long forked tail. His presence has been said and felt by many in at least 50 different towns. Countless stories have circulated describing the devil's escapades, raiding chicken coops and farms, destroying crops and killing animals. Back in the day, gangs were constantly formed to apprehend the mysterious entity, but with no success. At one point, as much as $100,000 was offered for the capture of the Jersey Devil, dead or alive. No wonder. They say it moves very fast and is often described as emitting a high-pitched, blood-curdling scream. Belief is so real that reliable people from police, government officials... I've seen this picture before right here. So supposedly that was the creature caught on, I guess, one of those... uh. One of those motion sensor cameras that they keep out for like what you know hunters use for the uh deer deer season. Um and they caught that photo right there. But I don't know, that could be photoshopped. You know, a lot of these like deer footage, uh these these still cameras that catch footage at night in the woods are photoshopped. So I don't know if someone added that in there and just said, like, hey, look, I found a Jersey devil. He's right there in the woods in Jersey. Like, I don't know. I mean but uh yeah, I mean it it looks legit, but yeah. I don't know. Officials to businessmen, many have witnessed the devil's mischief. To this day, people have sightings of something or tell stories of strange occurrences. They believe that the legendary being is still around. Number 8. Pokaini Forest. Nowadays, many people associate magic powers to this forest and its stones, considering it to be a powerful energetic place and an intersection of the Earth's bioenergetic flow. Similarly, many Pokaini Forest visitors have reported that they have observed abnormal phenomena, but there is a charming sense of mysticism that surrounds these enchanting woods in Latvia. Known for its labyrinth of paths, visitors need to set aside at least three to four hours to explore the entire forest. The unusual heaps of round, moss-covered stones that lay in random piles across the forest is a unique attraction here. But the unnatural shape of the stones caused several speculations as to why. However, there is no confirmed explanation. Yet, people have attributed special powers to these stones. Some consider the forest to be a healing center or an old pagan sanctuary. And it's now frequented by psychics and channelers to boost their energetic charges. No Some visitors claim the stones have an uplifting and energizing effect. People will sometimes bring offerings to enhance the stones' powers. Others treat this place with caution and consider it to be a haunted area or even a gateway to a parallel world. But be warned, it's said that taking the stones from the woods and bringing them home is bad luck. Number 7. Wow. Moon Trees When Apollo 14 lifted off back in 1971, on board were three astronauts and about 400 seeds, tree species like loblolly pine and sycamore, also known as maple, were taken on the space mission. The seeds were flown around the moon 34 times to investigate how microgravity affects plants and similar research with seeds still happens in space today. And now trees grown from seeds that were flown around the moon back in 1971 could be growing in the United Kingdom. The Royal Astronomical Society and the UK Space Agency are on a quest to find up to 15 moon trees that could be anywhere in Britain, but records of them can't be found. However, a second-generation moon tree is known to be in a private garden near London. Fingers crossed they can all be located. But there is good news. Most of the moon tree seeds were planted in the United States, and some of those trees still live today, but many have died since the 1970s. Still, sending seeds to space helps us understand the effects of the unique environment on seeds' biological makeup. Understanding the effects of space on ungerminated seeds will be vital for future space missions, including when we look to sustain human life beyond Earth. Okay, so I guess that was like, that was a worthy space mission. Hey, let's go ahead and take some tree seeds, right? And we're going to plant them on the moon or whatever, put them in the atmosphere. 
and let's see how they do up there, right? And then bring them back to Earth and let them grow. I mean, that's good research. I mean, if we ever do, like, try and move to the moon or move to the planet Mars, I mean, I guess that would be some documentation, like, well, this is how trees react in this atmosphere, etheric level or whatever. Like, I don't know. I mean, that's just... It... <laughs> It's it's like a, a a random reason to go to space, basically. Let's go to space and like spend millions and millions of dollars or billions of dollars to go ahead and test these seeds on these other planets. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay. Let's call Elon Musk. Elon Musk will take care of that. Number six. Humongous fungus. The largest living organism ever found has been discovered in an ancient American forest, and it's a giant ancient mushroom. It covers 2,200 acres of the Maller National Forest in Eastern Oregon, popularly known as the honey mushroom, started from a single spore too small to see without a microscope. It's been spreading its black shoestring filaments through the forest for an estimated 2,400 years. The outline of the giant fungus stretches three and a half miles across, and it extends on average of three feet into the ground. It covers an area as big as 1,665 football fields. That's a big mushroom. The discovery came after a scientist at the Pacific Northwest Research Station in La Grande, Oregon in 1998 heard about a big tree die-off from root rot in the forest east of Prairie City. And after a closer look, turns out this supersized shroom was actually killing trees. As for the mushrooms above ground, they're just the fruiting bodies of the much larger organism. For a few short weeks each year, the fungus sprouts edible honey mushrooms but they're the visible indicators of the hidden fungal world that lies just out of sight. But know before you go, you want to make sure you understand exactly what you're looking for when you're mushroom picking. Number 5. The mm. Mirror Realm Check out the Vestige Sculpture installation at the David Marshall Lodge Visitor Center in Scotland, designed wow. by artist Rob Mulholland. He usually places his sculptures within a green forest in the middle of a small body of water and occasionally in the middle of a dry and dying land. And as you can see, his most recent works often use mirrored shapes to create the sculpture. You know, that's pretty cool, actually. You know, can you imagine walking through, like, a forest and, like, just having mirror, like, silhouettes of people just, like, standing around? Man, that's almost psychedelic. That's pretty cool. Reflecting in the mirrored image is the bright, beautiful greenery of the forest looking back. Some of these mirrored images are slightly warped as well, making it difficult to see any clear-cut image of the forest beyond. And when the sculpture is placed within a body of water, the effect is even more distorted, yet hard to turn away from. These kinds of images beg a variety of different questions to art lovers and primarily self-reflection between what ties us together with the natural beauty of nature. The six male and female figures represent a vestige, a faint trace of the past people and communities that once occupied and lived in this space. The figures absorb their environment, reflecting on their surface the daily changes of life in the forest, and the reflective figures ask to look again and consider the symbiotic relationship we have with our natural and man-made environment. Number 4. Okay. The Legend of Snake Rock. Snakes. They've been depicted in religious scripts with utmost importance. Some cultures depict them as a symbol of evil power and chaos, while in some cultures they're treated as divine power. Some people even worship snakes. Today we're going to discuss one such tale, coming from a beautiful lake in Thailand, Thailand called, called the, the Kong Long Lake, the legend of the snake rock, when a photograph started to take rounds throughout social media of a pretty mysterious and pretty massive rock carving that looks like a really giant snake. People have been saying it was a real snake who turned to stone. Somehow, the story is local mythology that's been told for a long time. So, as soon as the cave was found, there was no information about who found the cave and when exactly they found it, but the National Park revealed that it was discovered in 2020. That looked like a real snake. I'm just saying, like, it's just kind of weird, like, in Thailand, like, that they worship, like, a snake, and all of a sudden you find, like, this huge giant rock structure that looks exactly like a snake like like i wonder if that thing was just like turned to rock or something like that and like it's really a real snake <laughs> like that'd be crazy like some god snake like what like maybe a wizard like petrified it or something like that like nah this is going too far <laughs> no. 
There was, there was no, no information, information about who found the cave and when exactly they found it, but the National Park revealed that it was discovered in 2020. This giant snake rock formation can be found in the Naka Cave National Park situated in the Bayung Khan province of Thailand. As you know, whenever something so mysterious is found in any corner of the world, it always has a legend associated with it. The legend of the snake rock is no exception. Number 3. Wow. Ancient Temple as the best preserved temple at Angkor Wat, this is the only one to have remained an important religious center. And you can see why. This is one of the most significant archaeological sites in all of Southeast Asia. The temple is the pinnacle of the high classical style of local architecture. The temple's design is supposed to represent Mount Meru, the home of the gods according to both the Hindu and Buddhist faiths, while the walls and moat below honor the surrounding mountains and the sea. And that's why Angkor Wat played a major role in converting Cambodia into a Buddhist nation as well. It's the country's main tourist attraction, for obvious reasons. Its name translates to Temple City. Although visitors to this place number just a few thousand at a time, the landmark now welcomes some 500,000 visitors each year. It kind of, uh, well, this is this, this isn't Cambodia, but this, this kind of looks like something from like a Mayan temple, like, you know, or something like that, something you would find in America's, you know, uh, yeah, but they said this is part of the reason why they were converted into Buddhism. Hmm, okay. With magnificent monuments, various ancient urban plans, and water reservoirs, it's a testament to an exceptional civilization at work. The region is so significant, it's become a symbol of hope, appearing on its national flag, it's one of the most important pilgrimage sites for Buddhists in Cambodia and around the world. In 1992, it was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Number 2. Hmm. The Hermit in the Woods The word hermit comes from a Latin word meaning of the desert. Except this hermit was not anywhere near the desert. In 1986, 20-year-old Christopher Knight drove into a forest in rural Maine. He abandoned his car and taking just some very basic camping supplies, simply walked, walked into, into the woods. The After getting deliberately lost, Knight eventually found the site that would become his home, a small clearing in the densely wooded area surrounding a lake called North Pond. He put up his small nylon tent and settled down. He was completely hidden. Knight survived the bitterly cold winters with temperatures dipping as low as negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit. He regularly took cold sponge baths, shaved, and cut his hair. Okay, now I do remember this guy. It was a story about this guy. He he purposely went into the woods and like lived for like some crazy amount of time. I I think they said like what thirty years or whatever. I don't remember exactly, but I just know now like he's like a normal uh person living in like society, and like I think the dude like wrote a book or something like that. I don't know. Let's see the rest. He avoided building smoky fires which might reveal the location of his camp, but relied upon a propane camp stove to cook and melt snow for drinking and bathing. He didn't come out again for 27 years after he was arrested. Having entered the woods with almost no possessions, he set up a camp composed entirely of items stolen from nearby cabins and camps. He survived by committing around 1,000 burglaries at a rate of roughly 40 per year. Number 1. The Missing Persons Project a man named James Rankin posted a video of this weird discovery following his expedition to Woodland located near a residential area of Berkeley Jackson County Park in New York State. Two films totaling 20 minutes of footage document the weirdly empty camp. Very Blair Witch-esque. He discovered around 25 missing persons posters and see-through plastic envelopes that were pinned up on various trees. They looked weathered as if they'd been there for a long time almost like shrines to missing people while hiking in a forest in Long Island. There was also a large tent, bedding, and tree stumps that appear to have been arranged like chairs. Looking into the missing person posters further, Rankin discovered that they matched those of real missing persons cases, which freaked him out even more. So he contacted local police. However, there are claims it's got police confirmation the case was being investigated. It's been claimed that the posters were there as decorations for a Halloween party. There was a campsite nearby with a bonfire pit, so it's possible that it's just an elaborate and very creepy stunt to get the locals whipped up. 
while more cynical onlookers claim this mystery is a hoax. If it's a prank, it sure is a freaky one. If I don't know about that. You know, prank or Halloween party, whatever the case may be, you're going to put up actual missing persons photos? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I mean, it, you got a point where you're just, like, being creepy and another side of it when you're just being, like, psychotic. I mean, like, come on, that's real people who went missing. They have no idea where they are. Like, you're going to post those pictures up in the party? Okay. If you learned anything here, before you go into the forest, you better be prepared, right? Take some water, a snack, a flashlight, and a camera. We need more videos like these. Like and subscribe and share the memory. Yeah, that was a little bit, uh, that was a little bit weird right there. I don't know about that. I mean, that last one with the whole Halloween thing where they were like posting pictures of missing people. Like, honestly, that might have not even been the party. That might have just been the murderer. Honestly, just like, you know what? Let me go and post these all up in here. This would be my little party area right here. You know, his little psychotic party, whatever. And then he just left it the way it was. And right, you know, and then someone stumbled on it. And then it's like, whoa, what is this? You know? Was being investigated, so we think it was just a Halloween party. Well, if that was a Halloween party, then the people who attended it might need to be investigated. But anyway, all right, so I got another one. Let's go and do another one. Um, yeah, the Supreme, that was pretty good about the Supreme. Uh, definitely check out his YouTube channel. Okay, uh, let's go and see what else I have. All right, so I have one here top 10 scary videos that will cause sleep deprivation all right and this one is by chills so we all know chills obviously it's pretty popular um it's one of his more recent ones so let's see how see how good this one is let's go If insomnia is what you're after, then this list was made for you. These are the top 10 scary videos that cause sleep deprivation. Number 10. Creepy Crawler. A body the shape of a football over a dozen legs. A vertical ascent up a wall. Published by Carnage Bread Human in September of 2021. This creepy creature is a new one for the books. Looking somewhat like a turtle with a shell-like body, the mysterious unknown critter's many legs and... Alright, so chills. Really? Chills. How are you going to start it off like this? Bro. Me and you both know that CGI. All right, let's keep going. And in little balls for feet, the thing keeps pumping up and down on the wall, pulsating as though it's doing push-ups or breathing heavily. Push -ups. This creepy clip has many in the comments scratching their heads. Some think it's an extraterrestrial or a demon that eats human souls. Others think it's a bug. If so, it's an enormous one. Danae Liliquist simply advises, nope, 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 run. I think I'll take- <laughs> I say it like that. Nope, 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 run. <laughs> Oh my god. That advice, number nine, tennis goes. Fake me. The tennis world better watch out. There's a new tennis pro in town, and it's Supernatural. Published by T Virals in September of 2020, this paranormal bro. activity happened in front of hundreds of spectators at a tennis match. As a player volleys the ball to serve, a small dark figure can be seen moving behind the net. It runs past and then disappears when the ball hits the net right in front of it. Well, no one seems. Chills, you you know this is fakery. This is another CGI scene. This is literally edited. Someone edited that picture in there. Oh my god. To notice on the quarter in the stands at this venue, the camera captures what they cannot see. Can you see it? What do you think it could be? I've never heard of a tennis court being haunted before, but that seems to be what we're dealing with here. Number eight. Oh my narrow god. Chills. Escape. Do you want to sleep tonight? Then lock your doors before you watch this next video. Whoa. Even if you're aware of your surroundings, sometimes <laughs> evil is lurking just around the corner out oh, of sight. This 50 year 
22-year-old woman learned that lesson the hard way. She was simply entering her Bronx apartment when a creepy what? stalker sprang out of nowhere. No, no, no. She, she, she heard him at the last second. You notice how she, when she opened the door, she went in real swift and closed it. She was... <clears throat> she closed it real fast. She, she heard him coming. She heard him coming at the last second. That's crazy. That is... Yo, hopefully the police got a hold of this tape and investigate it to try and break in. The scary moment was captured on security camera early in the morning of September 2021. After struggling with her keys momentarily, the woman managed wow. to slip inside her home seconds before the... He tried to use his foot at the last second. You see, he tried to use his foot to kick the door open or try to hold it open for a second, but she had just closed it like the, the last second. She closed it at the very last second. Man tore around the corner and raced up to the door. The woman seemed to know she was being stalked as she glanced down the hallway before fleeing inside and closing the door just in time. Trying to catch the door before it shut, the stalker attempted to yeah. force his way in, yanking on the doorknob and then ringing the doorbell just after the woman entered. He yeah. stood in the hallway for a time and appeared to be angry. A moment later, he laughed. Police put out a $3,500 reward in the hopes of catching the man who is suspected. Dead. Just another reason not to get any sleep tonight. Number seven wow. in the classroom. Schools are often haunting places at night, and this one is no exception. Published by the Bottom Line in June of 2020, this scary video is trending in the Hindi speaking YouTube community. The creepy footage shows some teenage boys wandering around a school at night. They're clearly not meant to be there. As they walk along the second floor, the lights in a room across the courtyard start flickering on and off. Off. They then turn off altogether, and the door to the classroom flies open. Instead of running away from the room, they run toward it. That's why things start to get wild. Chairs Whoa. are tossed unceremoniously out of two separate doors. This scary circumstance causes the boys to flee as fast as they can. One chair is even thrown into the courtyard below. What malevolent force is this? They continue racing away and arrive at a corner. A couple of objects in the corner jump into the air, causing them to turn around again and hesitate for a moment before deciding to brave the corner anyway. After all, whatever is chasing them must be worse than whatever this is. They race off into the darkness, hearing female screams behind them. <laughs> But they don't look back, only ahead until they're safely off of the school grounds. They made it out alive this time, but only just number six. That was creepy. I don't know. Some of those stories that like, come out of India, they, they be seeming kind of real. Like, I don't know. Unless they got, like, really good, like, like people that can, like, put up, like, sets. You know? Like, I don't know. But uh, that one right there, I think I've seen that one before. Like, it's like a school they go to. And, like, every, like, classroom just starts, the lights start going off and on. And, like, chairs start flying out of the classrooms. Like, that would be a pretty, like, that would be scary. That would be real scary to witness something like that. Yeah, I don't know. That did seem real, though. I remember that one. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to call that fakery. Knock, knock. Locals in this town in the Philippines claim to have experienced a knocking on their doors at midnight. What they found knocking on their door will make you lock yours. Published in April of 2021, the scary video captures another unknown creature. This one seemingly trying to get inside. <laughs> As something rattles the door, a boy goes to scream out the window. The neighborhood dogs start barking as he continues to holler, waking all of the neighborhood up. The boy panics and seems to be in distress. He indeed riles everyone up. As soon as they're all shouting outside, clearly disturbed about something. But what? And that's when you see it. What is that? What was that? This creepy creature is spotlighted by numerous what? flashlights the from those who are out to capture him. The creature appears humanoid and flesh colored as. What is that? I don't know. It doesn't look like somebody pretending like to stand. I mean, it looks like someone's like, you know, like kind of looking like. I don't know. That that looks that looks kind of. I don't know. That's creepy. 
As it perches on a nearby roof, it causes great mayhem in this small village, but doesn't stick around for long. What do you think he is? Whatever it is, we wouldn't dare answer the door. Number five, <laughs> peeking poltergeist. Now you see like a gargoyle or something. I don't know. <laughs> see it now you don't. Post it on the r slash ghost subreddit by Ale Oops. This terrifying footage was captured on a security camera at one in the morning in May of 2019. Watch the doorway straight on. As time ticks past in the darkness, a figure in white slides into view in the doorway and then moves back. For the rest of the video, the doorway remains empty. The redditor asks, "How can you debunk this?" As you may have guessed countless redditors try to esther lane explains her theory saying it looks like a child was heading out the door but decided to retreat the redditor says the family has no children and no one was home at the time he also adds that his friend never experienced any paranormal activity in the home but there was a negative feeling there others think someone broke into the home and this camera may simply be low quality and unable to capture things clearly in low light that's what I was going to say. It kind of looked like the camera was potato. I'm thinking like, and probably it just kind of like looked like that, but that, that wouldn't explain like the shadow you saw along the wall, you know, and then all of a sudden you see the person in the doorway. So unless it's editing plus potato footage combined working together to give us this, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I mean, that's why I don't like looking at potato footage. So the usual suspects. What do you believe? My hunch is that this footage is paranormal. Number four, Demon House. I don't know, like I said, that could have been, uh, the, the shadow could be edited and the camera is just giving us potato footage and that was a real person just standing in a doorway. Simple. House. This demon desperately wants you to take his phone call. Published in October of 2021 by Dark Ghost Paranormal, a Russian paranormal explorer by the name of Dennis installed cameras in a house that is reported to be possessed by demons. Here's what he found. Dennis is touring the demon house when a phone starts to ring. He arrives at an old rotary dial phone inside a metal box. How is it ringing? It doesn't even look plugged into anything. He lets the lid close as it continues to ring. He later lifts the phone off the hook. And it still rings incessantly. No one is on the other end. Sure. I don't know. I'm, I'm, this looks like fakery to me. I mean, like... That could have been a ringtone on his cell phone, and he just was recording with the camera like, oh, it's his rotary phone right here inside this suitcase. Really? Okay. Early after, another phone, this one with push buttons, starts ringing in another room. That is different. That's a different ringtone. That's the phone is off one. the hook already, but it... Now, that was a different ringtone. I don't know. Maybe he has different ringtones on a cell phone. And he's just letting it go off, but I don't know. It rings steadily. It sits in a torn cupboard box beneath a table. Again, the phone doesn't seem to be connected to anything, and yet it continues to ring demonically. demonically. How does a phone ring demonically, Chills? Ch chills, what? My man just said the phone is ringing demonically. The phone just ringing like a normal phone. It's just off the hook. Like, I don't understand if it was, like, ringing demonically and, like, there were, like, monster noises and screams coming through the phone while it was ringing, but it's just ringing, bro. Like, what, demonically? Okay, whatever. Dennis leaves for another room where there's a third phone sitting on the table. It's a red rotary style phone. The phone from the other room continues to ring, but this one doesn't ring yet. After a time, the third phone starts up. This one's cord is obviously cut off, so who exactly is getting through on this thing? When he picks up the phone, spooky carnival music is heard on the other end. It sounds like a creepy funhouse mirror nightmare is happening inside this phone.
After a while, the music stops and Dennis hangs up. That's when things start getting even creepier than phones ringing incessantly. A chair moves on its own next to the desk upon which the phone sits. Then the drawers from a nearby kitchen cupboard come flying out. Seen from another angle, the cupboard wobbles back and forth roughly before this happens. In another room, Dennis discovers where the carnival-like music is coming from. It's the push-button phones sitting in a cupboard box off the hook again. If you're not going to answer, the least you could do is pretend you're not home. Number three. Okay, yeah, that is a creepy situation, and honestly, I don't think it's real. I think it was staged by this guy. Uh, I think I've seen him before. I think he's like a Russian YouTuber. He goes into like these haunted houses, supposedly, and spends the night there, and he goes by himself, you know, and he's not like on any drugs or he's not intoxicated which is i probably think he's probably one of the craziest uh paranormal hunters on youtube but i don't know if, if dennis is that guy but he the way his camera setup is it's the same way that uh, that one russian youtuber is but um i think that was fake honestly you know with the phones ringing and everything i just think it was a good setup honestly and they just like made it look like it, it, it was good entertainment i'll say that but to take it seriously i don't think so i, I think it might be fakery Hey, this ghost child just wants recognition. Posted to the r slash ghosts subreddit by Blonde with a Scary House. This recording was taken in a bedroom at nearly 8 a.m. in mid-October 2020. Though there's no one in the room, you can hear a mysterious childlike voice whisper. Hey. A second camera in the kitchen captures a strange semi-transparent form near the counter at around 3 a.m. The figure is the height of a child. It appears and quickly disappears in a blink. Is this the childlike figure who is trying to communicate with the living? Something. That could be an overlay. You know, that's, a, that's also an editing tactic that you can do where you can have someone stand there earlier that day. Or just at an earlier time. And just get the, the picture of them standing there. And then just like make the transparency almost see through. You can make it as much see through as you want or non. And you can just put, place that image or that time frame there and overlay it on an image like this, whatever kitchen or whatever right there and make it look like it kind of like ghosted in and ghosted out. But really, it was just an overlay edit, you know. Okay, but anyway, um, also that 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 part where uh, the ghost said, "Hey, that was clear. That was so clear. I heard that. Like, come on. I mean, I don't." think it's an out-of-frame light source, like a passing car, but coupled with a disembodied voice. I'm not sure what to believe. Number two. No, that was way too clear. So I'm trying to contact you from the other world or dimension, whatever, like that. Talking that clear and showing up in you know dimensional like phases like that like bro no, your, your, your house would be all over freaking tv you'd be on the news you'd be like the amityville horror you know part two or something like that like no nah, mm -mm. bakery at drop, a poltergeist walks into a bar and walks out with a baseball cap. Published to its raining babies in October of 2021, this man was working at Wolfden Brewing when he captured ghost activity on CCTV. He explains in the video that while helping a customer, a hat, which was a piece of merchandise, mysteriously fell off the wall. In the clip, before you see the hat fall, you see some strange movement in the light of the window. As the strange movement travels up the stairs, you can see it shift the light in the stairwell window as well. It's almost like the video becomes wobbly and out of focus, but only in this area up the stairwell. The man says it seems like the camera is bending, and the hat appears to jump off the hook rather than fall. Is this just a trick of the light, or a shapeshifter? Whatever it is, it's clearly struggling to pick up this hat. I've got a challenge for you. Since you've made it this far, why not like this video and hit subscribe in the next 5 seconds? all right so uh yeah so um that looked like it could have been real i mean it was during the daytime we saw like the movement right there by the staircase that hat tipped over i mean that would be a lot of editing if that was edit and that would be a lot of string work as well too so i'm, I'm gonna give that last one chills their credit I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say that was real so you know once again chills you came through with the last video 
As long as you ain't give us no CGI at the end. I, hey, I'm a happy camper. I love the videos. I love chills. What he does for work on YouTube is awesome. Okay. Um, also, this is old. Uh, it says uh, his subscribers are at 1.8 million. Uh, chills already surpassed 2 million subscribers, and he's still growing. So uh, definitely a uh, really good paranormal uh, activity channel. Okay. So uh, definitely go over and check out chills. Um, I think he might have one more. Hold on, let's check and see. Because I upload four new scary videos every week. If you're curious about what I look like in real life, then go to my Instagram at Dylan is chillin YT and tap that follow button to find out number one yeah, hallway number one. haunting. All right, so this is number one. Okay, so come on, chill. So because that would a good one before we end it. Don't give us no fakery. If it's CGI, I I'm going I'm going to lose. I'm going to you know take away the creds I gave you on that. But, I mean, let's see. You might give us something good. The last one, at least make it look real. Let it be good. A YouTuber in the comments of the following video claims to have some backstory on the uploader. James McLean. Logical Velocity writes that James was his good friend. According to Velocity, when James was in his 20s, a good friend passed away in the home this video was filmed in. James and his mother continued to live in the trailer that often experienced odd happenings. He would dream his friend was sitting on the bed and they'd have conversations. The home also had a peeker ghost, the type that you might catch out of the corner of your eye around corners. The peeker poltergeist would also bang things around and cause a lot of racket. According to Logical Velocity, James passed away in this house in 2019 at the age of 40. If this is all true, it certainly sets the scene for this creepy video. Published by James McLean in July of 2014, James says in the clip that he's been hearing things in the hallway all night. He walks past the hallway, but there's nothing there. He then enters the kitchen for a moment and then back to the hallway. That's when you start hearing a guitar being strummed. He walks down the hallway and shouts hello to whatever ghost musician might be tuning his guitar. The strumming immediately stops, but as he backs away, a picture frame on the wall falls to the floor. Something beside it also falls, hitting another picture frame askew on the floor before falling to the floor. Okay, wow, okay. Okay. Wow. James continues to back away in a panic, and we assume the poltergeist activity is over. Or if Velocity's story is correct, then it's just begun. Are you in search of a treasure trove of scary videos? Well then get ready because this top 10 list will shiver your timbers. He says shiver your timbers. Wow, chills are taking it to the Pirates of the Caribbean. All right. So, yeah, that last one, though, I don't know. Um, That looked kind of real, you know, especially that reaction he gave when he yelled in the hallway. He was like, ooh. Like, that seemed like it was real. It seemed like he was, like, genuinely terrified. Like, that seemed like it was real. I don't I don't see why someone would sit, you know, waste their time using, like, potato footage. In that case, that potato footage I actually find credible because he was in the hallway. And, you know, and why would he record all that just to be like, it's a ghost in my house and... With that bad footage, you know, he if it was fake, you know, usually I'll try and get good camera and then make it look fake, but I don't know. Or they'll try and get potato camera too, but I don't know. I just got a vibe like that was genuinely real. So the last one, I, I want to say that was real footage, yeah. Okay, uh, let's see. Should we do another one? I do got an extra one uh, that I was going to say for my next uh, my next video, um, or for, for the next time I shoot. Uh, false reactions, but you know what? Right, let's just go ahead and do it. We'll just do it now. Okay. All right. Uh, this video here is uh, let's see. He finds real life mermaids. Okay. Uh, do I believe in mermaids? Do I think mermaids are real? I've I've heard a lot of stories. I've read a lot of accounts online, and you know, uh, you know, people uh, having like these, uh, I guess, like these stories where they believe they they ran into a mermaid in the ocean or while deep sea diving, or they, they found something on the shore of a beach or something. Then you have the accounts from like, you know, the sailors from like 
you know, back like hundreds of years ago that were on sea. And they always said they reported seeing human like figures with fish tails and such like that, you know? So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, like how true all that is. I mean, do I think mermaids are real? Possibly. I mean, cause the ocean really hasn't been a hundred percent discovered. It hasn't even been 50% discovered, you know? So, I mean, it's a lot that we don't know about the ocean. So it's very possible that there could be a humanoid fish like people that live somewhere down in the depths that you know just never come to the surface very often or so who knows okay anyway this is a mermaid video let's go like and subscribe right now or this spider will crawl on your face when you're sleeping ever since the history has been documented We've heard numerous legends about the elegant, beautiful, and sometimes treacherous mermaid. Every culture across the world has its own version of this magical being. <laughs> Some saying it to be the Ningyo of Japan, and for others, it is like Ariel of Disney fame. But the question that still remains unanswered is, are they even real? Today, we look through 15 real-life mermaid sightings from history. Mermaids! Yes. Let's begin. Number 15, cave swimming. A man posted a video in 2016, which was captured while he was diving in a cave in Cancun, Mexico. Let's go. After he went underwater, he saw the silhouette of a creature that had features of a human from the waist up, but had a fish-like body from the waist down. In his video description, he basically said that he captured the real footage of a mermaid and that he's sure the mythical creature is real. The video is truly impressive, but looks as if it is too good to be true. The video description says that there were other people in the cave, but he was the only one with a camera. Due to lack of publicity and information, we can confidently say that this video is a hoax. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to just say it right now. that This is fakery. I mean, look at the, the, the way the the fin bends i mean it's a good good costume and everything like that they set up and the whole look and everything looks real um but uh yeah the, the way uh the fin did, the fin is bending at the knees that that's too human like that's very human like i'm i'm pretty sure if something like that existed it wouldn't bend at the knees like that it would be like a whole muscle like the the tail would be like a whole muscle you know moving like this like you know fluently not bending at the knee like there's a joint right there <laughs> that is a person in a suit that's all it is it's probably a free diver that's a free diver it has nothing to do with reality number 14 zimbabwe incident whenever there's an incident the natural instinct is to find the culprits behind it and punish them if they were guilty but in 2017, an unfortunate incident of the drowning of two young boys occurred in Zimbabwe. The incident occurred while the boys were herding cattle near a dam when they thought they saw a fish swimming in the waters and wanted to catch it. It was at that moment that the mermaid snatched them. The eyewitnesses reported that when the mermaid resurfaced with the boys for a brief moment, their parents made the mistake of crying and the mermaid pulled the boys underwater until they drowned. The main source of the story is Zimbabwe News Online, and there have been reports that the area had other occurring mischievous mermaid activities, too. Number 13, Minnesota Mermaid. In October of two Oh, that last picture looked kind of like spooky. Could have been real, but... A story about two boys being taken underwater, and their parents cried, and it drowned the boys because they cried. It sounds too much like a folklore or something like that. I'm going to call fakery. 2013, in Minnesota, a man was hanging out at the beach when he saw something strange. He saw a man in a yellow hazmat suit carrying a person on a stretcher. The weird thing here was that the person had a green fin from the waist down. Were these people taking the mermaid to give it some medical help, or were they taking it to some secret lab for experimentation? The world will never know. Tell us in the comments, what do you think of it?
Number 12. Okay, I did see a video of that where the guys in, guys in hazmat suits lifted up something that looked like it had a big fin. And uh, people, I guess the video surfaced on the internet. And people uh, said that it possibly was a mermaid and that the government was trying to cover it up or something like that. Mm, I don't think so. I just think maybe it just was a huge fish or something like that. And maybe it was like giving off maybe it was like part of some i don't know like chemical spill or something like that and maybe that's why they had the suits on i don't know there's videos of it on the internet Bakery. lady smith mermaid in cape town south africa a mermaid was spotted over by a mountain in october of 2013. the mermaid was spotted by a woman who not only saw it but also saved its life the woman's name was Pisani Duma, and she heard the mermaid screaming for help as it needed to get back in the water. Duma was kind enough to help her, and later she described her as Caucasian and blonde. Oddly enough, the river where the mermaid was spotted has dried up after that. Number 11. Cave Sightings Cakery. The caves in Mexico weren't the only ones to be blessed with mermaid sightings. This particular incident took place in the Kalin Islands in the Philippines. In the picture taken by a tourist, the silhouette of the mermaid can easily be appreciated next to them. According to the witnesses, the mermaid left a very pungent smell. The mermaid wasn't seen initially when the tourists were swimming, but when they checked the photos, the mythical creature was then spotted in it. Unfortunately, it was then too late to approach it. Local city officials have now placed a mermaid statue on the shore, commemorating the frequent mermaid sightings that have, that have taken, taken place, place for, for centuries. centuries. That is someone who lives there who's probably been swimming in that water for years, possibly decades, and has come up with the bright idea to surprise the tourists with dressing up like a mermaid, putting on their little fin suit, and swimming close to the group and disappearing. Probably another free diver. Okay, fakery. Number 10, Mermaid Migration. You probably know that all mammals travel in packs. Whales, elephants, wolves, you name it. And if mermaids were an evolutionary species related to humans, they'd probably be traveling in groups too, just like... All right, even if mermaids did exist, I mean, I don't think they would probably be mammal, you know, because it's too, it's too many rare occurrences where people have seen them on the surface. They would probably be some type of, like, maybe an amphibian that we don't know about. Or um or fish species like hey they I don't I don't see them being something like mammal it, it, honestly I don't even think they would have human like features I think they probably would probably have something like arms maybe like appendages you know maybe like some eyes a face of somewhat a mouth you know but not looking like us like flesh skin nose you know teeth like ears like nah they're gonna look like something else you know what I'm saying like and probably just have arms that's it whales and dolphins. This footage alone They won't even classify as human or even mammal. Allegedly captures one such pod of mermaids traveling through the ocean. There is little known about the origin of the video as it was shared anonymously and then shared by various channels. There have been reports of mermaid groups in the past too, but they've never been caught on camera like this. Some people say that this is simply a pod of dolphins and nothing more than that. What do you think? Number 9. Hybridian Mermaid Dolphins. In 1830, just off the coast of the island Babenkula in Scotland, people were cutting seaweed when a woman saw a unique creature in the water which looked like a miniature woman. The woman who discovered it called a man and went after it. Some naughty children even threw rocks at it and struck it in the back. A few days later, the creature's body was washed up on shore. Right, because the children killed it with a rock. No, no, I'm just saying. But let's, let's see what they found on shore. And locals were confident that they had seen a mermaid. Number 8. British Beach Mermaid. So I guess we got to do our own research on that. So they said a mermaid washed up on the shore of Scotland. Fakery. If pictures don't convince you that mermaids are real, then believers will go to any length to prove their point. At first glance, this mermaid sighting looks quite promising, even if it looks somewhat gruesome. No, These doesn't. photos were captured by a man named Paul Jones in Great Yarmouth in Great Britain. He captured what looks like a decaying body with a fish tail, and the corpse was pretty much intact. However, if you look closely, you'll see that the tail of this creature looks as if it is made up of a black plastic bag. People still argue about this image as it went viral on social media. 
fakery. Fakery. I mean that 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 skull, the head looks way too similar to a human. I'm not saying that something can't develop into that with a fish like tail. Um I think that's fakery. I think someone put that together and just sat it on the beach and probably the guy took the picture. Yeah, he probably like molds stuff at his house. Maybe he does it as a side hobby, that and photography, and was like, you know what? I always had this thought about creating this fake mermaid. Put it on the beach and just take a picture of it and go viral. Become a famous photographer. Worldwide for the mermaid capture. Fakery. And no one knows what it actually is. Some even say that it's nothing but just a seal. What do you guys think? Number 7. Mermaid India In December 2017, a few fishermen in India found a bizarre thing in their fishing nets. A mermaid. The video showed that the creature was unique and had half the body of a fish and half that of a human. But unlike how we see mermaids portrayed in movies, this one did not have a human head. What? The photos and videos of this creepy... <laughs> wait, wait, they just blur out the chest? <laughs> Yo, <laughs> yo, they gave it the belly, a beer belly, and everything. Yo, like what, bro? If that's a mermaid, I don't think we need to see one of them in real life. That that right there is a uh, that would be horrifying to run into that in the ocean. To be serious, but uh, I'm gonna go with fakery. That is fakery, or some sort of like mutation of some sort. Yeah, the dust dust. And they got the belly button too. A belly button with a fish head. Belly buttons are like something that mammals like. That's that's associated with mammals. <sighs> Fakery in the bakery. Looking creature went viral online and thought that it was a real life mermaid. What do you think? Tell us in the comments down below. Number six, the human fish. In 1943, the world was embroiled in a global conflict and the Japanese were at the forefront. Japan had set up surveillance teams on the Chi Islands in Indonesia. During their watch, they saw a creature with spines on its back, a mouth like a carp, and it had a human side shape. Local villagers later caught a creature that looked very similar to the creature they spotted earlier. Number 5. New Zealand Okay, now I did hear about uh, uh, mermen or whatever, or fishmen that have that description you, you know you'll see a lot of those type of like i should say mermen or mermaid type of uh fish people in like video games you know um but uh yeah uh i think it's fake mermaid off the coast of south island in new zealand seven fishermen from papua new guinea had concerns that they found human remains on the sandy beaches when they called the cops they realized that the remains were not of any human origin and clearly belonged to a species that was a mixture of both humans and fish. This caused people to believe that they had found the resting place of the mermaid, but we're not so sure. What do you think about this one? Number 4. Baker. Buffalo Jags River In the village of Sirak, which is close to Swindletown, there flows the Buffalo Jags River, and in the depths of its waters, there's a legend of a mermaid that resides in the area. According to rumors and gossip, the mermaid has been spotted numerous times in the area by many generations in the village. In January of 2008, one of the locals named Daniel Capito was hanging out at a campsite late at night when he heard thrashing in the water. Upon investigation, he saw a woman with long black hair. As he went forward with the intentions of saving her, he said that the woman looked toward him and her eyes had a red tint and he was taken by as if he was hypnotized. He had to be saved by his companions, and apparently, the mermaid was seen by multiple people. If the story is actually true, we can only wonder why it didn't make it to the headlines around the world. You know why? Because it's fakery! That's why it's fakery, bro. Like, bro, if you saw something like that in the water and it had red tint in his eyes and they made you get hypnotized, that's no different from hearing a story about Sasquatch or Bigfoot, you know? Oh, it, make, it hypnotizes you and then it runs away or, or it kidnaps you and leaves you somewhere far off in the distance. Like, really? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you might as well just say that was a demon. You know what I'm saying? You might, it's not even, that wasn't a mermaid. That was, that was a mer demon. Yeah, and you, you, need, you forgot to, you know, borrow Frodo's ring from Lord of the Rings and cast your spell to turn invisible. That's all. 
That's all. Just next time you see you go out swimming, just make sure you bring the Lord of the Rings and you should be okay. Thank you. Number three, three. Bering Sea Mermaid. Apparently, people like Shakespeare appeared to have seen the mermaids, and maybe Shakespeare's The Tempest was inspired by one such sighting. In 1608, a man named Henry Hudson wrote an account of a mermaid he saw in the Bering Sea. She had black hair and had a head and trunk of a woman, but from the belly button down, she looked like a porpoise. Number two, Mermaid and Wave. Most of them. Hey, th th that was from a reliable source. That was Shakespeare who said that. Shakespeare, Shakespeare said that he uh, saw a woman, upper body of a woman, human woman, and the lower body from the navel on down as a porpoise. That sounds like a mermaid. So, maybe. Oh, also, I, uh, just a fun fact. Uh, I actually found out that the same time Shakespeare was alive, Pocahontas was alive. A lot of people don't know that. Okay, next one. The mermaid pictures at service show it resting on the beach or sitting on a rock, but there's rarely any picture of it swimming. But this video allegedly captures a mermaid surfing along the waves at a high speed. Although it is a short video, it is clear enough for us to appreciate that it has a human-like torso but the tail of a fish. Some have argued that this video is just a product of good editing skills. Yeah. But you never know. Number one, archaeological. I'm going to go with uh, editing on that one. I mean, and mainly because of the fact that the splash kind of gave it away. The splash just looks like it was straight up fakery. You know, if it wasn't for the splash, like they, they just had to come out the water and spread his arms. Like, I'd have been like, you know what? That looked like a mermaid. But it did look like a mermaid until the splash happened. Then I just saw CGI. I was like, that's a CGI moment right there. Anyway, it was good. Let's see what number one is. Mermaid Skeleton. This mermaid skeleton lies in the National Museum of Denmark and was allegedly found by a farmer who discovered it while plowing his field. Many of the world's greatest historical crypto-archaeological finds have been discovered under similar circumstances, buried under someone's property. Mermaid skeletons have been found and displayed earlier too, but this might be the only one to be displayed in such a prestigious national museum. Do you believe in mermaids and other mythical creatures? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. I don't know. Personally, I think that's creepy. If I see a woman swim up to me in the water, and you telling me this person breathes ocean water, like, through its gills, like, somewhere, and it, it lives in the ocean, like, the ocean already scary enough as it is. You telling me it, it's something else that lives down there that looks like a human, but it has a fin for legs? Like, I would be probably more scared of that than I would of a whale or a shark or something like that. Like, what the heck is this thing doing in front of me? And how is it even alive? This thing survives down here? How does it survive? <laughs> you know, like, I would be more afraid of the mermaids than anything else. So, um, I don't know. I mean, like I said, it's possible that, like, some people like that could exist, you know? But, uh, me personally, I don't believe in them. Uh, you know, I, you better off having me believe aliens exist than, than believing mermaids exist. You know, or somehow maybe if you can link like mermaids being some form of alien, maybe maybe you can get away with trying to convince me that way. But just mermaids just existing and living on Earth? No. No. Mm -mm. So science will have to be involved some way for that to be possible, I believe. Okay, guys. So that's it. There we go for boss reactions today. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. That was some good ones with the ocean mysteries and also uh, the wooded area of, you know, ghost type of haunting stuff uh, was pretty cool. I actually learned a few things watching this uh, this video here uh, I did today. Um, okay, so uh, with that being said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut this one. Um, I do have some other videos that I want to share in, in our next video or next uh, boss reactions I do. Um, I'll probably do another uh, ocean mystery video. Uh, video in the next one and whenever I do the next boss reactions. 
um yeah so definitely uh don't forget to go ahead and like and subscribe boss reactions check out the youtubers they're supreme chills check those guys out go to their youtube channels like and subscribe as well um yeah and any recommendational videos you want me to go ahead and react to definitely send me any information through the contact info on the about section of the youtube channel okay yeah okay and as always boss up